Good evening, everyone. It is just so great um, to be able to share with you and to, you know, get to walk in the light of the word because that's the thing that will encourage us. And sometimes it feels tough, you know, when we share the scriptures and when we share the whole gospel, the whole gospel to the whole world. You know, we, we cannot just give people little bits and say, hey, be encouraged by this and be encouraged by that. Because at the center of the gospel is a message of repentance. And that repentance means to change, to have a change of mind, to have a change of action, to have a change of direction, of revelation. It's 180 degrees turn. And it, and it's tough for us, but repentance is, is so amazing. It, it's just so, it cleanses us. It's like standing under this massive waterfall and it just goes over you it just washes through you you know you just soaked in it and so that's the beauty of the word of god you know the washing of the word of god and the working of the holy spirit in our lives and let's not grow weary in submitting and committing ourselves uh, to the fullness of the word and i want to read out of matthew 7 uh, the last two nights we've been sharing a little bit out of matthew 7 and we're continuing in that in matthew 7 from verse 24 it says, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. And he did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and bare on that house, beat on that house. And it fell, and great was its fall. And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. You know, it says like, sure, when we hear these sayings, when we, uh, we've spoken about keeping, asking, knocking, we spoke about the fact that <clears throat> we'll be known by our fruits and by <clears throat> the fact that God wants to know us intimately. <clears throat> and so the challenge for us is simply is when we hear these sayings, what is our response? Because we're going to build, you know. And what are we building? Are we building uh, worldly things? Are we building uh, emotional things? Are we building the kingdom of God? But it says all of us are building something. And you have to decide what are you going to build on? Are you going to build on the rock? Or are you going to build on sand? The, I have just have this imagination a bit like both builders are excited to build. Both builders are endeavoring and putting strength and focus in building because they want to finish this house the only problem is what do you build on now i had a friend who was a builder and he said there was these contractors that came from another place they were they he doesn't know how they got the job but they built a house and they actually forgot to throw a part of the foundation <laughs> and so two years later the whole house started to crack and started to like fall over because there was there was no part that was just there was no cement in it you know and so he says he, he doesn't believe how they could build because they were building so quickly you know that they were trying to finish all these townhouses in a very short time so they forgot to build right you know and that's why the question in this lockdown time is what are we building on what does it mean to build on the rock well simply it means to firstly to build into our relationships with god Secondly, to know that our family and the relationships we have with people around us, those are the most precious things God has given us. It's people. It's eternal things. It's when we invest in other people. If we just invest in worldly things, it's sand. It will, it will go away. It will wash away. You know, they, these sand dunes, I've never, I don't know if you've seen these pictures, but sand dunes actually move. And over time, they can move for a long time. They just blow away because there's no foundation. There's no solid substance and so even sometimes when we preach the gospel sometimes we give people just the stuff they want to hear because hey it's just we want to encourage people we see a lot of people i read in this week of this one pastor in Gauteng that you know you can sign up for his um, spiritual input but you have to pay a fee for that you know and so he makes a lot of money out of that and i, I just felt like whoa you know we cannot peddle the gospel. We cannot sell the gospel. The gospel is for free. And whatever is not of faith is sin, you know. And so, yes, we need finances for the kingdom. And yes, we need to make people aware of that. I'm all for that. But we cannot sell it. We cannot go for that and make money out of the gospel. And so what are we building and how are we building? And so in this lockdown time, you and I have an opportunity to 
be still to have time. The most precious commodity that you have is time. The scripture says, redeem the time. You know, Moses prayed, David prayed. It's so many people said, Lord, teach me to number my days because the days are evil. Teach me to number them. Every day is a gift from God. And how are we building? What are we building? And so take this time to just be practical and put out a list of what is your faith goals? What are the things you want to build in? What do you want to change? Because many people that I speak to say like, yo, I, I didn't realize my life is so busy. Busy, busy, busy. Sometimes, you know, the devil keeps us busy. Sometimes uh, we get, the devil blesses us so that we can just be so busy, build so many businesses, but yay, yeah, not for your kids. Hey, what are they saying about your building? What are the people around you saying about you, you building? Or are we just investing in natural things? So I want to encourage us, but challenge us, build on the rock. And let's have a biblical worldview when we approach the gospel and the things of God. Don't just take just little pieces. Don't just say, hey, I want this piece and that piece. And oh, I, I like that part of God, but I don't like the wrath of God. I don't like the judgment of God. No, no, you know, we have to fear God. So you, you can have the love of God, but you also need, need the fear of God. You can have the love of God and the grace of God and the mercy of God, but you also need to understand God is a holy God. You know, he loves, that's his motivation, but his character is his holy. We cannot, we cannot have the one part and not the other part. You know, it's like when the son of the president would um, be at a home, he's not going to call his dad president, president, president. But when the president makes a speech to the nation, then that son needs to know his place. Yes, he has got a relationship, but he can't now run around, you know, and tug on his dad. No, no, he needs to know his place because there's respect. There's, there's a place for the authority that that person occupies. So let's not mix in our hearts, you know, that we just become buddy with God. Let's not, yes, he's our friend, but let's also respect him because God is moving and he's inviting you and me to be part of that. And he says, come and build. But be careful on how you build. Let's evaluate that in this time. I want to pray for us for wisdom uh, and clarity on how we should build. And especially going in the weeks and months ahead. What God is saying concerning our houses. Um, so let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for each one that can hear my voice. I pray, Lord, that we will be master builders. Because you are the master builder. But Lord, with unless the Lord builds the house, they will labor, labor in vain. So Lord, we're just being part of what you are building. Lord, help us to build it into eternal things, Lord. Into relationships, Lord. Into especially those who do not know you. We pray, Lord, for a turnaround in hearts, so many hearts, that you will bring revival in our land. And that you will, your kingdom will come. Lord, you said it's your good pleasure to give your children the kingdom. Lord, we want to know that pleasure is to see the kingdom come. Lord, today, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen.